was different. So, you know, we're going to just throw it out there and ask you guys to uh, let us know what those were. Don't be shy. No stories. Um, watching Casey Adams, who is on this call, go up on stage to get the Procurement Specialist of the Year was a pretty big moment for our chapter. For I the agree Copper chapter. with you. Congratulations <laughs> on that. Thank yeah, you, that was Casey. exciting. Thank you, guys. <laughs> yeah, thank you. And I hate to say, Casey, to me, part of the um, excitement was your little boy, who I thought was yes. Just <laughs> He had a great time, so. Not to take he, away from your award or anything, but yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's the true star. I know that. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you know your place, don't you? Yeah, exactly. Well, thank you, guys. Did, yeah. did I see your hand up? Did somebody have yeah, their hand well, up? I was just clapping. Oh, so. oh gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> That was my celebratory, right. like, yay, go Casey. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's good. That's good. Any takeaways or aha moments from a speaker or something that you came back with and felt, wow, uh, that was, I learned something. I'm going to try something new. Definitely the burnout, the, can't remember her name right now, but the addicted to winning thing. And I'm like, oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I agree. Addicted to achieving, and I'm like, uh, I think that's like everyone in the room, probably. <laughs> I thought she was excellent. Mm -hmm. And remember, guys, um, if you attended in person or virtually, that you can go back and listen to those recordings, which was great. So if you missed a session, um, you can go back um, and listen to those um, sessions that you may have missed. So that's always great to have. <clears throat> Excuse me. I wanted to share too, I had reached out to Jen earlier this week because I got a lot of emails um, wanting to get, um, allowing me to get badges. And when I reached out to NIGP, I don't know if anyone else got those, um, like for the IT track and some different things. And I they shared with me that those that attended forum would have those opportunities to do that. So if any of you got those, that's kind of what it was about. I didn't know what it was about. I was thinking, oh, I didn't sign up for anything. But as a result of you attending forum, that's why those emails came out. I just wanted to share that because for me, that was like, I had no idea what it was if anyone else got those. Thanks, Lori, because I didn't know either. So that was yeah. to me. I wasn't sure. I knew we had those things happening, but I didn't know about the prompted email. So, yeah, so it's kind of nice. So if you attended, it gives you an opportunity to obtain those badges as an attendee. And I'm not sure if it was just for um, just in person or virtual, too, but it was kind of a nice you know, follow up to being there. So I did want to share that if anyone got it. Anyone else want to share? I mean, there was lots of fun things that happened there. You can even tell us stories that maybe, you know, weren't exactly procurement related. Hello, this is Alberta from West Virginia. I really enjoyed the sessions and getting to, to talk a little bit with Kristen Webb. Uh, the first class that I took from her was the Managing Up elected officials. She She's not only dynamic, but she's just very engaging. And so I really enjoyed um, listening to her. I, I told one of my colleagues, I said, I think I could take a class from her every week because <laughs> she she was encouraging, you know, and, and she was, you know, matter of fact. And I kind of like that because it kind of matches my personality. But she was sincere and authentic um, at the same time. So uh, I'm like, I really liked her. <laughs> I agree with you. And we get a lot of that feedback. I will let you know, all of you, that she does speak at chapter events. I do not know what her rate is, what she charges, um, but I do know she's very active in many chapters. So depending on what your speaker budget is, um, it's certainly something to um, possibly seek out. Um, if you want her as a speaker. So I do know that she is open and willing to do chapter visits. Right. Girl, there were so a good. lot of great speakers, honestly. There yeah. there really were. I don't, I, she just stood out to me. She was just a breath of fresh air for me this year based on what I was looking for and needing to hear. Um, 
but Jed is another one. He's engaging and keeps your keeps your your attention in a class as well. Yep. And Jed is our one of our ambassadors. Love to have um, his name recognized there, but is also a very dynamic speaker. Thanks for sharing those because I would agree. I, I'm sure I'm on mute. <laughs> it's really loud in there. Go ahead, Alyssa. Did you have something? Um, but I, I agree with you. Kristen Webb is she has spoke at some of my chapter events and she is always dynamic in my opinion. Um, and I, I could listen to her weekly as well, Alberta. <laughs> so I, I, I just put her um link to her website in the chat. Um, and Terry also said that she will do um via Zoom. So again, um certainly somebody I think worth she comes from the procurement world, she comes from yeah. um Terry is our Tennessee chapters, isn't it? That's where she. Yes, she was the other end of our state, uh, yep. uh, Memphis, which is a world away from Knoxville, <laughs> where I'm at. But um, yeah, she she's great. Perfect. Well, the next thing that was on our list, it sounds like. <clears throat> a, did someone have some? No. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, the chapter award feedback. Did anyone have any feedback? You know, any of you that submitted for the chapter awards, anything that you think we could do different going forward, anything that you had concerns about or, you know, maybe weren't totally comfortable with in the chapter awards, or maybe you were just very excited for your awards. Um, but just share with us anything, feedback on your chapter awards. That's for the SEAL or the Outstanding Award. Right. So if any I I did was excited that we had record numbers for SEAL participants. Um, we didn't share the stats with everybody, but we had 12 chapters move up at least one um, um, SEAL, one level of that. So that was really exciting to see over the last four years that chapters have taken that application, have really looked at it and made a difference. Yeah. So when they submit that, um, they are really enhancing their programs and activities for their chapters. So I think that's exciting to see that um, chapters are moving through that. But we are getting ready to evaluate um, both awards. And to Lori's point, if you all had any feedback or thoughts about either one of the awards, um, we'd love to hear it. You know, I think for us as chapter ambassadors and those from member council and other groups that participate in scoring of the awards, you know, it's it's always a work in progress, right? And you're always rooting for every chapter to do more than they did the year before. So I hope that chapters that participated will truly take advantage of reaching out to Jennifer and, you know, kind of having a debrief and understanding, you know, where you were and why you were there. So it'd be nice for you to encourage your chapter leaders, if they're not on this call, to reach out and kind of get some feedback. Because I know that as I'm scoring the ones that I scored, you know, I, I can remember from maybe the previous year or, or so forth. And I'm always saying, oh, I hope they do this, you know, and I'm so excited about it. And it's, you know, it's frustrating when you know that there's such great things being done and maybe you just didn't convey it well in the, in the submission. So I really do think that those debriefs are so critical for next year's submissions. Joe? I was going to say, <clears throat> um, they're great measuring tools too, like for AEP or any of those awards that as an agency you would apply for these um you know when you're answering for the thing for the dashboard to to guide you or uh, the seal or uh one of these uh, awards e even if you don't get them as Lori was saying in that debrief it, it gives you an idea there's value in it to see where you are uh and you know, things that other chapters are doing, those questions have been formulated there by those. And not only that, but then the winners uh, that are out there, uh, they're posted there so that, you know, you can go in there and get ideas. And, and the reason everybody's agreed to that is that they don't mind you uh, stealing their idea and, and making, uh, applying it to your chapter. So, it's a great program just as a measuring tool, uh, you know, award and recognition aside. The, the other thing I wanted to share, and I see your hand, Michelle, is that some people get a little 
you know, anxious because they're like, oh, I have this great prayer room. It's the first year my chapter ever did it. But other people have spoke about it before. But clearly, if it's something new to your chapter, put it out there because it's new to your chapter. And there's always a learning opportunity for all of us in the way that someone does it. Right. So it's not about that. It's always a new you know, experience for someone or something that no one's ever thought of, but maybe just new to your chapter. And aside from that, what Joe was speaking of, I always tell my chapters in area two that I like being a part of a board and being a part of the strategic planning and utilizing that um, seal information to plan for my next year. So when I'm planning what I'm going to do in the next year and I see that I was short on some of those items, that's an opportunity for me to think about, can I move forward with doing this, this, and this, that then is going to allow me to get those points toward that seal. So it's a great tool for doing your strategic planning. Michelle? Thanks. I was just, if people are comfortable, I was just wondering if anybody who maybe had a chapter that didn't submit, if they felt comfortable sharing maybe what the barrier was to to submitting or and how maybe um, the ambassadors could help them. Great question, Michelle. Um, this is Trudy from RMGPA. I well, we submitted and yes, we won. Um, but we did not submit the year before. And there's a years that, you know, we just don't do anything. So there's really nothing to showcase. Um, so la last year we did a lot, but the previous year to that, we didn't have anything to showcase that would fit in those categories. So we didn't even submit. We submitted for the seal, but not for the award because there was nothing. So there are instances where the chapter does nothing to submit. Got you. That's great feedback. Thank you. Anyone else to Michelle's point that your chapter did not submit and maybe the reasons why? Okay. Any other just general feedback about the seal or outstanding as we review that you'd like us to take into consideration, uh, thinking about filling out the form? Is it too difficult? Uh, the questions are concerning to you, anything like that? If you're not willing to share it here, please feel free to email me. Um, we're Again, we're meeting at the end of this month to start our evaluations to um, update those for next year. And I think it's it's okay, Jennifer, to share that we are looking at the categories to make it clear what category maybe some things fit in. Because I do hear from some chapters, they'll say, well, you know, I'm not sure if it fits in this or that, or maybe it fits in both. And so we're trying to, as we're looking at those evaluations and thinking of things to make it more user-friendly, that's one of the areas that we're looking at as well. So I don't know if anyone has felt that when they were submitting or any feedback on that as well, but please reach out because we, we really work well with the feedback that we receive from you. Laura, I do want to mention Teresa. Um, oh, Russ, you want to go ahead and then I'll, I'll talk about the chat. Yeah, I was just going to suggest, and this came up, I don't know who I was talking to at forum, but the onus of filling out the seal on any of the other award applications often falls on, for example, the immediate past president or an individual. And I get that because they have a lot of knowledge and history. But uh, in the conversation or two that I had, I suggested that in, that they don't do that on their own. They create a committee within their chapter that is simply the wards committee. And that's what they work on. So they have all year to put it together. And then maybe that chair of that committee is the immediate past president it was just a suggestion and it was received by the two folks that i talked to i agree and so we'll see what happens excellent idea i agree too i think it takes the burden off of one person it allows it to be collaborative as we all know that some of our volunteers want very short um not uh, fulfilling committed um, activities to do as a volunteer. This is a kind of a one and done. It's an easy subset of a group of people um, that may be able, you have one person on the committee that all they do is proof an outstanding award. You'd be surprised how many outstanding awards we get that 
the links haven't been verified. Um, there hasn't been a spell check on it and things like that, that sometimes just a third party looking at it can be helpful. So I like that idea, Russ, that it's it's a committee other than just one. And I know that one of our ambassadors mentioned in our follow-up meeting, you know, that for her chapter, they were trying to do it at the last minute. And so I just encourage you to try to keep track of things throughout the year. And that may be the benefit too of having a committee, right? So each person on that committee could take a, a particular piece of the award or a particular piece, a particular piece of the information, you know, for the um, seals and have that available at the end of the year. We are going to send out reminders earlier this year. So we're going to try to keep on top of it too, to encourage people to go ahead and be thinking about it. Hey, so yeah, I was just curious, and Lori, you may have just mentioned it actually, but with forum being a month earlier next year, are yeah. is, are the deadlines going to be pushed up at all? Yes, everything will be pushed up probably around two weeks. That's one of the other reasons we really wanted to um, get this out earlier. We're going to do, okay. we usually don't do a webinar until sometime after the first of the year. We'd actually like to do a webinar once we launch the forums this fall. Um, but we, I would, I would bank on a two to three week earlier time. So it's usually due May, what, May 15th, that first or second week of May. Um, so I would look to, to the end of um, April, 1st of May, just again, for timing of ordering things since form is earlier this year. Good question okay. though, Casey. Awesome. Thank you. Joe. Yeah, just uh, one last thing I thought of. Um, maybe somebody even mentioned it and I missed it. If I did, I apologize. Uh, but you're, I think I can speak for most, if not all, chapter ambassadors would be willing to um, look at your award submission before you turn it in. Uh, we're the ones that read these in, year in and year out, and we know what the criteria says and and we know uh, the way that, that has been modified and evolved over the years since its inception. So um, they're ideal to reach out to as a resource to say, hey, would you mind taking a look at our uh, award submission and see what you think uh, before we turn this in? And um, that's a, probably a really good way to go about it before you, you submit your award. Joe, and I'll reinforce that just to let um, everybody know the way we do judging is your ambassadors would not be scoring your chapter submission or anybody in your geographic area in which they have visited or done anything to. So that's why I think it's so important to take advantage of an ambassador in your area that looks at them, that knows the criteria up and down, knows what we're looking for in scoring to take advantage of having their eyes on them to say, hey guys, you've missed the mark here, or I'd add a little bit of meat here. They will, the conflict of interest is very, very important to me to make sure that nobody is reviewing um, anything in which they've had a, a, a visit or a, a personal connection with that individual chapter. Good point. Good point, Joe. Something also that we did at Forum, and Teresa um, mentioned this in the chat. Um, this was the first year we did a poster session. That was a it was a ex chapter. I was an ex, I'm sorry, an excellent sh procurement showcase. I think is what they titled it. Um, it was for agencies and our chapters to do a literal printout poster session that we had in the back of the expo hall. Um, we did have several chapters participate in that. And we're hoping to get a survey out here in the next week or two to those participants to get some feedback um, on their participation in that. I really enjoyed it. I was excited to see so many people walk through that gallery. And that's how we kind of had it set up as a, a gallery. Um, I hate to put Trudy on the spot or Alberta. I know both of your chapters participated in that. Um, but did you have any initial thoughts? Um, Alina, I'm sorry, you were there with um, Oklahoma on what you kind of thought about it. Um, I'll go ahead and start. It's Trudy. We the, the we had three people manning um, our and talking to people going through there. I think their biggest concern was the space 
because they were kind of close and it got really loud when people were trying to talk and answer questions. They love the idea that, you know, people could see, but it was just so much in that little space. That was the initial feedback I had got from them. Yeah, well, Trudy, if you had seen how it originally was set up, you would have <laughs> it, literally they had you know how we had those boards kind of free flowing. They actually had them in a V towards the back of that squared area. And I thought, how are you going to have people like listen and stand? I just so I just took the initiative. I said, I'm breaking all these apart and I'm going to move this. But that would have been even worse. But I still think that's good feedback. So it might be we have too many people, maybe it's one representative every hour rotates out. So if you get a group of four or five people standing and they're side by side, then it doesn't become too overwhelming. But that's excellent feedback. So thank you for that. And I can tell you that our chapter loved it because it gave the opportunity to talk to people about what we did and the event we did and the challenges and whatnot. So our chapter really liked it. And then we did have another RMGPA member that did one for their agency. And, okay. you know, she really enjoyed it too. She got to showcase. It was long months, I believe, um, and got to showcase the what they did, they did a vending services solicitation and she thought it was good too. Awesome. Anybody else that participated have feedback? This is Alberta. I, I agree but about the space. Um, okay. It was limited and with, with the noise, being able to have some engaging conversation, you had to really get in someone's personal space to hear them at times. But, you know, we're all friends and, and everybody seemed to be okay, be okay with that. But I, I think it was really good, especially from our perspective, because we've we've kind of been fighting chapters, I call it, because um, just the engagement was down so low and I was getting burned out. And now we have a new president who's who's really put forth time and effort and trying to be the cheerleader and talk about all the things that we're doing um, and just trying to... Um, be lateral with, with that enthusiasm to get others involved to see, hey, here's what can happen with just a little extra effort. And here's what this all means to each one of us, not only as a chapter, but as an individual, as a professional and seeing what others are doing and and where they've come from and, and having pride in showing success. I think it's very encouraging. Great. I love to hear that. Um I don't know what or if it may look like for next year. We certainly are, like I said, are going to send some um, surveys out to you all to get feedback on that. We really were hoping for 40. Now to hear about the feedback on the spacing and stuff, can you imagine if there have been 40 poster mm -hmm. sessions in that area? That would have not worked very well. So this is good feedback to be getting that uh, of how we'd want to set this up. Um, there's actually been some um, people talking about, you know, they weren't there or they were virtual and I would have liked to see in a poster session. Maybe I didn't need to hear a recording, but it would have been nice to see what people were sharing or contact some something, someone about what their abstract was or what their, their story they were telling. So um, I think there's some way, certainly room for improvement on some of that, but um, thank you for sharing it, all of that. Uh, you know, I have a different perspective because our chapters didn't exist, okay. uh, but I found it fascinating, uh, not as well, an exciting chapter, but I walked through and visited all of them. Of course, I had a, a, a particular interest in the West Virginia chapter because I had one, I went to college undergrad in West Virginia, but two, I had uh, taught a class there and they had saw fit to throw my picture up on their board to scare people off <laughs> but um but people seem to show up anyway but um but uh, i just found all of them very fascinating the one from somewhere in florida they their trades um uh high school trades school had done a uh, uh airplane thing they had bought an airplane somewhere that was very fascinating so i found all of the exhibits and that crowded corner uh, that you could not hear anyone unless you were whispering in their ear. Um, uh, <laughs> fascinating. Uh, so yeah, so hopefully the acoustics and space could be made better and it'll grow. But I, I've, the nerd I am, I found it very fascinating. And I'm not an officer in either chapter anymore, but I came back, you know, with some ideas to feed to whoever's elected next year and the two 
two chapters and um and it won't be me uh you know i'm on the tail end of my career now so uh, whoever's elected uh you're gonna feed them some ideas love that um and i think it's fun i know this is gonna date me i feel like it's kind of an old school thing poster sessions i know the medical field does them a lot it's a much more common to see those but i thought it was kind of neat to see something different um, and Whitney, I'm going to share what you typed in, if that's okay, if you look in the chat. Um, it was a great opportunity, she felt, with her team to present informally for the first time when maybe you're not into, like, I don't want to do a submission. I don't want to stand, you know, in front of a classroom. Um, Whitney, you want to talk a little bit more about that? I love that that concept. I never even thought about that as a, as a positive yeah, absolutely. Um, I was able to bring my teammate, Kelsey, who's our procurement coordinator at the city, and she was able to kind of man the poster. She she kind of, she almost kicked me out. She was like, you go and, and enjoy the expo. I'm going to stay here and tell folks about our poster. And so she was able to, in a really informal way, um, have some of these small conversations and she was able to share feedback. I noticed that she sent our um, our template over to a few other agencies as well. Um, we focused on procurement month this year. So that was our big push was a training uh, push, I guess, for procurement. Month. I love that. Trudy? Was, is there any way that the posters can be like maybe in the registration area so you don't have to look at them specifically at the expo that you can look at them throughout the, if it's in like another hallway or someplace. So yes, you, the people can still talk about them at the expo, but they can look at them and look at them on their own as they're either coming through the registration hall or in a separate area on the way to, you know, one of their sessions, because then they showcase all week instead of only you know, that, that day and a half. You read my mind. It was certainly something that I thought about um, when I, I initially proposed this just as a chapter showcase, not as for agencies. And I really wanted it outside the expo. I wanted it so people could meander between sessions um, coming and going from the convention center. I really kind of liked that idea of showcasing um, it's something I have on my list for next year. Carrie will kill me, um, our meeting planner. It comes down to, of course, space, you know, and how much available walking space there is um, in the in in Denver next year. Trudy, you probably know that better than I do, how much space there is. But I think it's certainly now, I mean, you have the opposite side of now you have to man it. So, you know, it was very easy to man during expo hours if you had a couple people. So if you have it that's, multiple days will it be more difficult to get people from your chapter to be there um will they want to be you know do you just manage between sessions or during breaks i mean there's a lot of things nuances that i think we could work through i like the idea of having it out and about for people to see when they want to see um, we also were afraid of some feedback from our vendors that there is something happening that is not part of the supplier world uh, back in there, we haven't gotten any feedback about that. I think it was in enough space that it certainly didn't deter from our exhibitors, um, but just another place to go and congregate for things. But I love that idea. That's on my list, Trudy. Think in the same language. Well, and then even if you don't man your show, your poster board, if you leave business cards or contact information, so if somebody has questions, they can just reach out to you, like if they're just wandering around. Just some my thought. Yep. And the other thing that I wanted to have that was a little bit more formal, I would have liked to have each poster session tagged uniform with the agency name or a chapter name, because some of them did it differently within their posters. And it was hard to tell who they were from and a um, some type of thing that identified who to contact. So if you weren't there, but they you liked the concept that was there, then you then could reach out to them and say, I'd like to hear more about that. So both of those things were kind of on my my um, radar. But thanks for the feedback. That's good feedback to know. And hopefully um, we can get more participation. Sometimes you have to see it live for the first time to then know how you wanted to participate because you're like, I don't know what to do. Or I, so a lot of people told me, they're like, I just want to see what everybody else did. So I know what I could do for another year. So sometimes um, as a visual learner, you kind of need to see what it looks like first before you jump in. But thanks for those chapters and agencies that uh, stepped up and took the plunge with us.
And thanks for bringing that up. That was a great topic for everyone to hear about and how you guys participated or didn't and what the reasons were. So I loved it all. So I thought it was great. I would agree that the space was a little limited, but I enjoyed going through and looking at all of them. Um, one of the other things that we wanted to talk about today, and then I again, I'm going to ask if there's some things that you guys want to talk about that we didn't talk about, is what are your plans for the fall? What do you have going on with your chapters in the fall? Just share with us, like, Anybody have something exciting coming up or a fall conference or anything that you want to share prior to the end of the calendar year? This is Valerie from the state of Michigan. Um, I'm willing to share some info. Sure. All right. We're going to be doing our annual fall conference the first week in October. We've got it all set. And what we try to do every year is rotate where the location is so that um, throughout the state, people don't have to drive as far or can drive further and then maybe would have the ability to stay overnight because some entities, if you're within a certain radius of where the event is, they don't allow for that. So we this year decided to do it back in the Detroit area where the last time we had the conference, we had a lot of participation. We're a month out. And I'm freaking out a little bit because we have not had the participation or the, the people registering that we were hoping for. And we're kind of at loggerheads. We're not really sure what to do to get people to come. I don't know what the deal is. Um, we've had a hard time getting people applying for chapter awards. And I'm not really sure what's going on there. Valerie, I don't think that you're alone in that. Um, but I will throw it out to the to the group. This is, I think, a good question to ask the group is, you know, with registrations coming up for your fall events, is anybody mm -hmm. struggling with participation? Do they have any incentives, anything running um, in conjunction with their program that's helping to boost up that registration? Yeah, because we did an early bird and that's where we got a lot of people. And then since regular, it, it was a $25 savings, but since then... You've only had a handful of people register, so I don't know. How often are you marketing it? Are you sending out weekly reminders, you know, every two weeks? How often? Well, we we have a, a by every two week, like, chapter email that goes out. And, yes, we remind them um, with the awards. We, we're doing the same thing, but in opposite weeks so that, or in that same email so that people, we don't want to inundate people so they don't read the emails. We don't want to have right. too many of them. Um, I got to push again, I guess, uh, do another push. I was planning to do another push next week with an email showing who the speakers are and what the topics were to try to generate some, it's, we're hit, we have nine, uh, nine and a half contact hours. So it's, it's a decent amount of training I so know. I will tell you two things I experienced being a um, chapter leader and in charge of conferences. Number one, people sometimes won't register till they see the schedule because their agencies won't allow for them to. So it's that's good posted. that you have it out there. It's and then the other thing that we did at our chapter one time when our um, attendance seemed to be low and it always seems to come together. But, you know, you get nervous when it starts to get closer. Um, is we took our chapter leaders and gave them some of the regular attendees agencies and had them reach out personally. And I know that's a big ask of some of your chapter leaders, but like if you have a big group that comes from one agency every year and you don't see that they're registered, we were able to go back and look at our um, historical data and mm -hmm. determine what those groups were. Like in Virginia, we get a big boost from the VDOT group. So if we didn't have anybody registered from VDOT, then we would be like, oh, they usually have 40 people and they're not on here. So oh, I would wow. just yeah. suggest that maybe you do a little bit more personal reach out. That's what we had done yeah. and it worked for us. All right. I've, I've done that before on a reverse trade fair. Um, I've got somebody at work that shows me how to do um, emails and then send them out so that they're personalized and then they, they go individually. So <laughs> it's basically a, a uh, mass emailing, but it's all personalized. So, and they're getting it directly from me versus from, 
our MPPOA info, you know, dot net, right? So they're not getting it from, they're getting it from me, the president of the, of the organization. So I don't know, maybe I'll do that next week too. <laughs> or the week after, I don't know. I'm just trying to think of things to do. Um, we reached out to BidNet too and said, hey, not everybody that's in bed, BidNet in Michigan, we would love to have them all be members, really, believe me. And we had talked about having non-members come, but we have never had non-members come to our conferences before. So I don't know. We're kind well, of in Virginia, they charge um, a different fee for non-members um, and quite frankly, well, we it's cheaper for them to join to come. So I never understand why somebody would register as a non-member. I, I don't understand why they just wouldn't join, but um, yeah. we do allow for that. I mean, they have to be in the procurement space. And then we yeah. also offer other ch um, chapters that are NIGP chapters, the member rate. So that could be something to like, if there's some chapters in or around that region that you may want to push that out to. And We're the only chapter not, in the state. Yeah. Yeah, Mitch, yeah, but Kara, you actually, I was just going to call you out to see if you would speak because I know Kentucky does do this personal um, outreach. Can you share? We do. And um, Lori, as you were talking and telling Valerie, it made me think of, you know, one thing we do in Kentucky because we kind of experience the same thing. Our big forum is our big thing. It's a three day event that we host mm -hmm. for our members here in Kentucky. And um, we normally have a pretty large turnout, but it seems like in the last couple years, like registrations are really slow in the beginning, even with our early bird rate and like our early bird rate, the difference of $75. And we raised it thinking, oh, that'll really, you know, it'll get them to sign up early. It didn't really matter. They still <laughs> wait. So we, we do our forum towards the end of October we normally have anywhere between 300 and 350 people attend. And right now our registration is still only at like 220. Um, but it seems like two weeks before our conference, we'll get a big influx of people. Okay. Um, we, the biggest thing we've done and we're, we'll get ready to send it out is we have started this personal touch. Um, so we have 15 members on our board and we take our entire membership and we divide it up to our board. So each board member gets a group of um, members that they personally reach out to. So anytime we have any type of message we want to go out, instead of sending a blast, we create one email, have every board member reach out personally, and they send individual emails. So it's, hey, yeah. Valerie, I want to tell you what's going on. We yeah. have seen that work a whole lot better because I think a lot of times our blasts get blocked by firewalls and spam. Yeah. Um, and because we'll have a lot of members say, oh, I, I haven't seen anything about this. And, you know, we had sent out like three blasts or something. So right. the personal emails seem to make a big difference, um, which is what we'll start doing. Probably in another week or two, we'll start with our personal emails. And we try not to send too many of them just because I know everyone gets a lot of emails. But yeah. that has been the biggest help in getting our members to, to pay attention to things coming through. They don't just ignore those emails that way. Yeah. Okay. I think that that's probably what we're going to need to do. Thanks, Kara. Looks Great. like Tracy's got some info too. <laughs> it's slightly off topic, but um, for us, I know that we have a link that people have added to the end of their email, like in their email signature that um, makes it easy, especially when you send it out to vendors and that sort of thing. But then every email that you send out gets some sort of notification then for these people to see that. And then it if they just click on it, it links them right there to go register. So they can either register for the event or be a sponsor or anything like that. But I yeah. did want to ask, um, we normally have ours in October and November or November, and we discussed the possibility of changing it to earlier in the year because that is our biggest um, fundraiser for scholarships to send people to forum and to help with certification and that sort of thing. So we were kind of curious to get some ideas about chapters find it more beneficial to have it earlier in the year so that you have a little more idea of the money that you can spend for that sort of thing or if it's better for you at the end of the year or if anybody's done anything where they've switched it to a different time of year we see great question anybody done a major switch i would say tracy most 
if you're holding a, a one big event, it's either spring or fall. It really is where it is. I mean, those are the two, you know, it's that March to May and it's that September to October. I wouldn't even go into November for most chapters. Um, I, I, I'm anxious to hear if anybody's done a, a big switch to change from, if they only do one a year, maybe I'll ask um, Rocky Mountain. I know you guys do one in December. Did you guys ever have that at a different time and found just changing it up like that really made a huge difference? We do four events a year. We do two two days and two one days. So we do March is typically a one day conference. And then June, May, June, we do the two day and fall is another one day. And then our largest one is December. We have, and that's a two day. We started to kind of cut back on those just because, so for example, next year, we're not doing a summer conference because forums in Denver. So we we're not going to, we're asking our members, Hey, go, we're get, saying go to a forum rather than spend your money here. But we had very good success last year, but we've always done, you know, summer, fall, summer, winter, are two big conferences. Kara, have you guys in Kentucky ever done yours in the spring or has it always been fall? No, it's pretty much always been the fall. Um, we always do an event in March that's celebrating March procurement month. And we do a one day training and then we do a reverse trade show in the summer, which is late spring, early summer. Um, so we've always kept our forum in the fall. We have tried it different months. Like it's bounced around some. Um, the latest we've ever done it has been towards the end of November. Um, but we found October seems to be the best month for us here in Kentucky, just because it's NIGPs usually already happen. So we're not interfering with that. And then once you hit November, you're getting into holidays. So we tend to stick with October here. Tracy, my only concern is if you try to spring is would you go a year and not have it? Because that's, our discussion. Oh, that's the big so thing. Is that, yeah, is that you would not have it one year because if you tried to have it in October and then again in April, um, you know, it, it a lot of depends on our most of your agencies on fiscal year or calendar year. Where does their financials lie when it comes to paying for the event? Um, I think that's a tricky, you know, call to to pick. Um, but I, again, I don't know of anybody that's done a major shift. I would also say to each of you that are talking about the attendance, are you doing a save the date like way in advance? Like a lot of places, and I think Kentucky does this too, as soon as their conference is over, they looked at the following year and they're doing sort of a save the date so people can flag that and put it on their calendar. And like Jen said, budget it out of their budget for the next year as well. Yeah, we put a save the date out in February last year. Okay. Okay. This past spring. Yeah. yeah. Tracy, are you guys concerned about registration of your numbers or just if this is the best time of the year for you all? Because I know your conference is usually very strong and large. Well, it's just that we are usually covering scholarships after, like before the fact. <laughs> and exactly. so we kind of estimate about how many scholarships we can create. And then it's... Um, you know, three filled with the money that we make from our event for our bank account. But then it's just because we're basically relying on it being a very successful event in order for us to recoup those funds. We just wondered if it might be better to just instead know what we have to spend in advance before we would do that. And then um, have better financials. Tracy, way. it's almost the same as changing the date. It's all as if yeah. you budgeted differently and didn't do them for a year and based them off of what yeah. you made in the fall. I mean, so it's a catch-22 whether you change the date or whether you don't offer them to try to get into a cycle that covers for you. Um, that's kind of difficult. Right. I see your conundrum. <laughs> so I, we were kind of just curious, like, if it seems more beneficial to chapters to have their funds in the beginning of the year that they know what to spend. And then if, if there's some sort of 
balance in the two as far as whether it's better to have to know what you're spending or better to estimate what you're spending for some of the chapters? I would recommend it's much better to know it um, uh, than to estimate it because you certainly don't want to get caught. Um, Kara, how about you guys? Yeah, I was just going to say the same thing. I would suggest that you know it ahead of time. Um, but I don't think you necessarily have to change the date of your forum. I would recommend looking at, you know, maybe this year you see how much you make at your forum. And then instead of budgeting the full amount, only budget like half of it and kind of do that. That way you don't have to skip scholarships for a year, but you're also not giving it all out. And then kind of build you a little nest egg so that that way, you know, maybe next year you can give the whole amount, but you've got a little st something held back to start with. Um, here in Kentucky, we do our scholarships based off of what we make at the reverse trade show. Um, but that was kind of how we did it. The first year we had the reverse trade show once, you know, at the end, once we knew how much money we made, we're like, okay, let's make this for scholarships for next year. And so then now it's just kind of been rolling. Whatever we make this year, that's going to be our scholarship um, budget for the next year. I think another one of our concerns too is just that it, I mean, it got pushed back pretty far this year just because there's so many conflicts with other chapters over in our area and things going on that it just every year seems to get closer and closer to the holidays. And um, so we just wondered if maybe another time of year might be better so that we're not dealing with the conflicts so much. And Tracy, I think that's a tough call. You know, that's spring. I, I, and it's funny because you, I would think that maybe even some that do stuff in the spring start to get, can argue, am I, in, you know, if you're procurement month, are you getting into spring breaks? Are you getting into schooling? So I don't know that there's ever a perfect time. Um, and that if you change it to spring, you may start questioning and getting things that you didn't think about in that spring time frame either, which is, which can be tough. Yeah. I wish we had the magic answer for I you. Know. <laughs> Anybody else have any thoughts or questions? Um, Austin, I know you guys in um, Oklahoma have a pretty big conference. Do you rotate that date around or has it always been the same time? We, we've kept it in the same season. So it's always, it's three events now. They've all been in the fall, uh, but we play around with the date. Okay. Uh, to see kind of where we can get the best turnout. Um, so, you know, we've learned a couple of priorities, you know, among the membership. We tried it the first time right before Thanksgiving, and we did all right, but the problem is it was right before Thanksgiving. So then we moved it to October, but turns out fall break's pretty inconsistent across the state. We actually did better in attendance the next year moving it to October, and this year we're doing it uh, on election day, which actually hasn't impacted our numbers. We, okay. We're still on track to be about where we were last year, but we, we've pretty much stuck in the fall. Is there anybody that has a very successful spring conference that, that doesn't have concerns with dates with spring break or anything like that? Well, I'll just say that, you know, obviously the AGP has a big spring conference. Sure. Um, and it and they do make sure that it doesn't conflict here in Virginia. Our spring break is pretty consistent across the state now. People have changed that to be the first of April. So that conference is usually in March um, and it's cheaper rooms because, you know, a lot of times they have it at the beach. So that's, you know, that's their bigger conference in Virginia. And then Kappa, the smaller chapter, they typically have theirs. It's just a one day in the fall. So Tracy, that's something to certainly think about. If if you wanted to move it to spring, you know, is there a consistent spring break that you wouldn't affect or starting to get into the end of school year type things or other major things that happen in the state of Arizona that you would have to conflict with? The other thing is um, one of the things that VAGP does. So even if you were thinking about running it right into the week of your spring break is they usually get the hotel to agree to additional nights um, before and after the conference. So some people sort of take advantage of that for personal trips as well. Yep. Good questions. We have about 10 minutes here. Does anybody have any other questions they want to bring up, Trudy? 
I just want to let everybody know, um, RMGPA is doing a virtual session for the RFP Dream Team. It is September 24th, and it's only $49 for the entire day. So if you guys are interested, um, it's open to anybody, members, non-members, and we'd love to see as much participation as possible. Thanks, Trudy. Do you have a link, Trudy? You can pop into there. She Look at that on cue. So the next thing I was going to end with, Trudy, is that it actually conflicts with another session that we're doing for chapters. I don't know what time it's at. Um, we did launch in the Leaders in the Loop um, yesterday that we're doing a designing for success strategic planning tools for chapters that will be Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern time. I don't know what time your RFP is. Um, we are recording ours. Um, so I did want to encourage chapters to participate in that. Uh, we sent out the, the links in the Leaders in the Loop, but I'm actually going to do a Zoom invite for all presidents and vice presidents. Uh, so it'll populate your calendar. Um, and then you can share those with any other chapter officers or leaders that you would like to attend that session. So that's just a little plug for that as well. But do we have any other subject matters or things that people want to discuss in our last few minutes? I would like to just remind everybody that um, Chapter Academy is coming up. Um, and I know it seems early, but it is September. So we are so hopeful that every chapter will be represented there in beautiful, cold Chicago. Um, so hopefully you guys will start thinking about that early on. So just a reminder. I just um, put in the uh, chat the link. Um, we Great. will launch next month registration okay. for our piece of it, which is the actual academy under Summit. Um, we will have the pricing for the second individual and the first person will be covered by NIGP um, as usual. Um, so we'll have all of that out and ready, but it is not too early to start planning for that. And again, the importance of of all of our chapters represented there, at least one leader, um, the value that that program has and the networking and connection that you make with other chapter leaders, I think is really invaluable to you and to your chapter. So we hope to, to have all of you present at that. But that is all that I had. Lori, thanks for helping me um, lead. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you, ambassadors, for joining us as well today. As always, if you need anything, let myself or your ambassador know. Um, if not, we will talk to everybody at the beginning of next month, if not sooner. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you all. Have a good day. You too. Bye.